Hi, I'm Tracy Watts. Welcome to Mercer Health News. Our topic today is medical trend. And who better to have that conversation with than Sunit Patel, our chief actuary. Hi, Sunit. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me, Tracy. Of course, of course. So we're going to talk about trend. And I think the best place to start is where did we end up with 2022? Because that's when inflation kind of started to tick in. And so what? how did we end up? What really happened? So 22, surprisingly, was a very favorable year for employer healthcare costs. They only ended up going around 2 to 3%, uh, which was quite a surprise. And what happened is that when we compare 22 costs versus 21, uh, the COVID costs actually went down significantly. And at the same time, uh, the utilization for other services, especially inpatient, never ticked up. And so for a lot of services, we're still below pre-pandemic levels, and that really helped to contain trend. And then the only other thing I'd mention is that the health plans were fairly successful in terms of negotiating fairly modest increases with providers, and that was somewhat of a surprise as well. So pull all that together, and it was quite a good year for most employers in terms of the average healthcare cost trends. Well, that is really good news. Um, but then we have to talk about 2023. And from our big survey of approximately 2,000 employers across the U.S., they've projected their actual health care cost increases for 2023 to be 5.4%. And that's quite a bit more than what you just said for 2022. Um, I'll just add kind of on top of that, you know, we started to get worried about inflation and the impact on just budgets and rates that were set for 2023. And so we did a little survey um, around the October timeframe of 2022. And we just asked, you know, how confident are you that where you've set your budget and your rates for 2023 is going to be adequate? And, you know, about 48% said, yeah, we think it's going to be fine. We're not worried about it. Uh, another 43% said, we're a little, you know, we think we might be off, but not enough for us to be worried about it. And then the rest are either insured or they didn't know. And so where do you see costs, you know, coming in for 2023? Because it feels like we're a little bit all over the board and especially coming out after such a great year in 2022 relative to, to medical trend. Yeah, so we definitely probably not surprising see an uptick in trends relative to, you know, that amazing experience in 2022. So in 2023, our best case scenario or our point estimate, best point estimate rather, is around 6%. So that's quite an increase from 2022, but, you know, not too much higher than historical trends if you think about 4 or 5% being historical. And a lot of that is driven by just incremental unit cost pressure, right? So as we see more provider contracts come up for renewals in 2023, we're going to see an uptick in those pressures. At the same time, we don't have the benefit of lower COVID costs necessarily. You've got the public health emergency that's going to be expiring. That's going to put some incremental pressure. You also have new therapies coming through the medical plan, right? RX therapies. Uh, and that's another source as, as well. Yeah. You know, that is good to hear. I think that a lot of our clients are you know, now thinking about 2024 and are really pretty worried. Um, I agree with you that we've seen kind of a mixed bag of experience. I've seen some clients that have had much higher than expected claims costs and others that haven't. And it just seems like it's kind of all over the board. Um, you know, the other thing too is that if we look back to the um, kind of the inflation and the financial crisis that we had in 2008, I don't recall that there was really this big surge to get care again, you know, after people kind of put it off because of the the financial issues. It'll be interesting to see if that happens. And um, so that kind of gets us to the question of the hour. What do you see coming in terms of cost increases for 2024? Sure. So for 2024, we see incremental pressure relative to 23. And the reason is, as you well know, Provider contracts often follow a three-year cycle. And so we began to feel inflationary pressures in 22. 23 would be the second year, and 24th is the third year. And why that's important is because when those contracts come up for renewals, we think that carriers will have 
a more difficult time making a compelling argument that inflation is transitory. You know, so far we're seeing inflation moderate for goods, but not on the services side. And you've still got the wage inflation um, that's been fairly persistent. You've got labor shortages, especially in healthcare. And so we're expecting, you know, elevated pressures. And so as those provider contracts come up, the expectation is that it's going to add maybe 50 basis points, 75 basis points of additional pressure relative to 2023. So again, we're not talking about significant, you know, uh, 1%, 3%, 4% incremental on, on versus 23, but certainly some modest pressures. And that's just from the contracting. And so we've got that pressure. Then we've got some pressure, you know, as you said, from these um, prescription drug therapies that are coming through the medical plan. And so what kinds of strategies do you think um, employers should be thinking about as they're planning for 2024? It's certainly hard to plan, right, with all these ups and downs, with 22 being low, and now we're thinking about an acceleration. So I do think that it's important to think over a long time period, right, like over a three-year time horizon, five-year time horizon. It's very unlikely that healthcare costs, uh, inflation trends will be below that of sort of the general economy. And so to that end, I do think that planning for and managing to strategies that focus on with uh, strategies that are win-wins for both the employer and the employee, just because affordability is such an issue with the rest of the goods and services, right? And so with respect to that, I think looking at solutions like virtual narrow network strategies are ones that employers will want to focus on. Yeah, ones that bring the cost down so that they they get some help on trend, but they can also share some of that savings with the employees. Um, that's a good point. I do think that really focusing on the impact of those um, pharmacy expenses in the medical plan is another place to just, you know, figure out how you can partner with the medical plan on that. What are they doing? What kinds of things should you be doing to try to, to try to manage those costs as well? So lots of good advice and good insights on trends. Um, as always, we really appreciate having you here today. And thank you everyone for joining us.